Hello everyone, how's it going? It's your boy Skilled Fawn, and we're back doing some more Dark Souls challenge runs. Let's waste no time and get straight on into the rules. So the rules for this run are we must be using bows only, and there's a ton of bows in Dark Souls, so we have plenty, plenty of options. We must defeat all the bosses in the game. Uh, we must beat the game and then lastly is glitches and or exploits are allowed now uh, this is a very fun game Dark Souls but it is a bit old I'm playing uh, the original I'm not playing the remastered or anything um, so it's a lot different than Elden Ring and some of the newer FromSoft games uh, as Omni rolling similar to Demon Souls so, you know, once you play through the game again, or you, know, you played it for a little bit, you'll remember all that. But yeah, we're gonna jump down and punch the Asylum Demon. Um, figured might as well get just some damage that way. And then yeah, we're just gonna take him out with a bow. Super easy. And yeah, we only use like half of our arrows from the start. Is it good? And yeah, we're gonna head on over to Firelink Shrine and uh, level up a little bit. And we're gonna go see the merchant. The merchant nearby is an undead burg, and he has a ton of useful uh, arrows and stuff. And yeah, it's like just very early on, which is good. So we're gonna get a ton of arrows. Uh, preferably the large arrows are better just because they deal more damage, but they are a bit more costly. You can just see how much the large arrows, they do a decent amount of damage. And so yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time fighting him, but no worries. We eventually take Taurus the Demon down. We got two bosses down. Looking like this run will be a nice and somewhat easy run. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe it will give me some challenging moments later. Just have to wait and see. But yeah, we're going to upgrade the short bow a little bit. And we get its uh, scaling from A to S, which is very good. And yeah, we're going to head on over to the Bell Gargoyles now and fight them. Yeah, the good thing about the Bell Gargoyles is... Uh, they don't, I mean, move around too, too much. You can just get, like, easy headshots on them. But of course, I, I roll at such a bad time. That's also the thing, is usually in DS1 and, uh, Demon Souls, I will... Well, depending on what I'm doing, like, the challenge run, I won't, like, lock on. Uh, just because I... <laughs> I really do hate the Omni roll. But, I don't know, once you get used to it when you're locked on, you're usually pretty good. Yeah, I almost got hit there from that jump attack. Must have hit him at like the last possible second. And yeah, we got Bell Gargoyles down. Means we are able to ring the first bell. You need to ring two of the bells to get to Anor Londo, which is like mid game. And once you get to Anor Londo, you gain the ability to teleport. But yeah, we're gonna get the Ring of Favor and Protection, and then we're gonna grab the Red Tearstone Ring. I uh, remember how painful uh, Quaylag can be low level. She just has a ton of health. Um,. My fist only, her fight took at least like 15 minutes just because of how tanky she is. Now, like, little damage I was dealing. But yeah, we're gonna take her down at like half an HP bar. Gives us more damage, which is always nice. And yeah, the second bell is gonna be rung. But yeah, we're gonna head on into Ceaseless. And just quickly take him out. 
is a pretty laughable boss if you do him this way. Um, just takes like a few hits and then just falls down. But if you fight him normally, he can be decently tough. Let me know if that's something you guys would like to see more as me fight him, uh, I guess the unorthodox way. But yeah, sometimes uh, when I go down to New Londo or Blight Town and then I'm coming back up, I forget that. I usually send the elevator up, so I, <laughs> I just get absolutely owned every time. Quite funny. But yeah, Moonlight Butterfly can be quite a pain just because... Uh, it just flies around for a bunch, and you gotta wait for it to come down. But since we have a bow, we don't really have to wait for it to come down. Keep on hacking. Yeah, not the worst, but definitely not the best damage. Uh, and then, the thing is, it's not really gonna get, like, too, too much better. Makes sense, it's just a bow, it's not like a... A great sword or anything, or a dex weapon. And we're gonna pretend to be a little egg <laughs> and head on back into the undead asylum. We're gonna fight uh, one of the demons that was tucked away. And this boss fight, I was just having a ton of trouble with. Um, Mostly one of his AoE attacks was is just like kind of tough uh, with a bow because you know usually with a bow you want to get some range between you and the guy but um it like shoots it out in front of him so you really have to just be behind him to avoid it so uh, yeah I had to play like very close to him uh, and also I had to get my damage even better just because. Like, I, I was dealing so little damage without the red tear stone ring. But yeah, I found like a perfect method though, where like if he hit me twice in this one way, then I could get the ring uh, to be active. But yeah, it's just a lot of running around, going behind him, and then I'm just making sure he's not gonna. Do some attack on me, that'll get me killed. And with very few arrows to spare, I think seven of the large ones and probably a very little amount of the the big ones, we take them down. We're gonna go fight Capra Demon now. Capra is not the, the hardest or I guess like the most important, but he leads to another boss that I want to fight which is the Gaping Dragon. And yeah, these dogs can be <laughs> kind of annoying sometimes. But eventually I get Capra into this nice spot where I'm able to just take him out from above and then whenever he comes up to me, I can just roll out of the way. And kind of a... <laughs> funny but annoying thing about his fight is when you go into his fight the like many enemies that are on the other side of the fog gate still be there like trying to chase you so they're just gonna run in after the fight and smack you a few times it's always fun it's always nice to get a little love tap but yeah we're gonna grab the large ember while we're down in the depths this will get my weapon from plus 5 to 10, if I so choose. And yeah, pretty much Gaping Dragon, you just want to take out his, or shoot his tiny little head as much as possible. That will get you the most damage. Then just run side to side. And yeah, if done properly, he'll just keep repeating the same moveset over and over until you take him out. Um, but, you know, sometimes, like, if you get too close, he'll do his tail attack or whatever. So you just gotta be careful for that. But yeah, since uh, we have both the bells rung, we are able to go to Sense Fortress now. 
So that would be something that we do after the Gaping Dragon. Uh, there's only one boss in Sen's Fortress, and he's not the most like difficult, but he's definitely not made for a bow build. Uh, you're supposed to stagger this next enemy. But we take Gaping Dragon down, we get Light Town Key, which we really don't need, and we get some nice runes. Huh? And yeah, I decided to go back to the shrine and just take out some of the NPCs that are there so I can get some more humanity. Uh, I always think about uh, Seath and the Four Kings, how usually, or like if you have higher humanity, you'll deal more damage. Or, well, not deal more damage, you'll have more damage reduction. And uh, especially like curse resistance, it's always really nice for Seath. And yeah, uh, <laughs> Iron Golem, you know, definitely a bit beefy, similar to <clears throat> the other bosses where they just don't take a whole ton of damage. But uh, y you can imagine how much worse it is without the ring. It makes it a much longer fight. And yeah, I also took out the Golem above that throws down the giant exploding balls. <laughs> I definitely do not want him messing with my fight. But yeah, we're going to head into the beautiful area of Norlando. Definitely my favorite place of Dark Souls 1 and let's say DS3 2. Um, so in DS3, <laughs> I, I mean Aldrich is kind of cool, but he's definitely not my favorite boss <laughs> in that game. I think uh, his story is definitely interesting, like him taking uh, Gwendolyn hours and then uh, dreaming up Priscilla's uh, life on so. In the painted world of Aramis, we get absolutely destroyed by those guys. And we're going to take out Priscilla. Now, I was a bit worried just because usually... It's so much easier with a, a melee build uh, with Priscilla just because it's very tough to find her, but I got her super glitched out where she just stood there for me. So yeah, I was not going to complain and we're just going to keep spamming her for the win. <laughs> super funny, but you know, you got to do what the game gives you. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Some would say. But yeah, with Priscilla down, we get another boss soul, more humanities, and more souls in general. So we're going to head on over to the blacksmith, and we're going to upgrade our weapon now. And okay, we're going to get it up to plus eight, which I did want to get it up a little bit more, but I figured, you know, better than having it. Uh, what it was before. So yeah, let's head on into Ornstein and Smo. Arguably one of the tougher boss fights in the game, besides like some of the DLC stuff. Uh, which, I mean, speaking of which, I have actually never played the DLC for this game. Um, I don't have the, or this isn't the remastered, so it doesn't come with it. Uh, but I definitely should buy it and stream that i think that'll be uh, a funny video or maybe just uh like a challenge run type thing <laughs> it's just seeing me fight uh dlc bosses for the first time because yeah artorius and manis will absolutely mess me up I've, of course you know seen their fights before but you know <laughs> When you see something versus actually doing it, it's completely different. So, yeah, let me know if that's something you guys would like to see. So, yeah, we're going to take down Super Smo now. Got to be very, very careful. He can do a ton of damage. Um, the one redeeming thing about Smo is that he is very weak to physical damage, more so than Ornstein. You're able to get more damage than usual. 
and yeah, we're just gonna keep baiting him around. I'm trying to get him to do like a move or two, just so I can get a few hits. And I'm not gonna be pressured into like rolling or anything. Yeah, we take down Smo and Ornstein. One of the bosses that gave me <laughs> the most trouble in my fist only run. Back when I was a complete noob at Dark Souls. Still definitely not the best, but I mean that was like my fist only run on this game was my second ever run playing Dark Souls uh ever. Like so because, um, yeah, kind of funny, like, when this game first came out, or, well, maybe, like, a few years after, I I bought it, and I was, like, I don't know, maybe a freshman in high school or something, uh, but I just didn't really understand the game, and I didn't have nearly the, uh, like, drive to play it, so, like, I spawned in, I think I went for the Bell Gargoyles, and then I went, like, straight down to pinwheel and i was like oh why am i having so much like hard times and stuff but then yeah like years later came back played uh that again finished that and then i was like all right let's see a challenge run do um do some fist only <laughs> so, yeah if you're ever, ever wondering why my my fist only one took so long and was kind of bad uh, that I mean, still, definitely. I'm not gonna say it was, or I shouldn't say it's bad. It was just definitely uh, not my my best work. But it, it still was good, you know. Cause I, I think any any fist only type run is definitely difficult. But when you do it for your like second playthrough, it's just brutal. But yeah. Anyways, Gwendolyn, you're pretty much just. I'm you know, supposed to avoid his spells and then just slowly make your way towards him. And yeah, at this point, I did want to upgrade my weapon a bit uh, more just because, I mean, we do have it at 8, which isn't bad for, I guess, this point, about mid-game. Um, But I also just didn't have too, too many souls. So this is kind of one nice thing that is uh, in the original Dark Souls, and I'm pretty sure the remastered too. And if you're looking to get some extra souls, this is a good way. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, one of the reasons why there's glitches and or exploits allowed is for like times like this, where I have to cheese a boss or something, but I'm pretty much going to need a weapon that is, you know, has more stats than you can wield preferably you know strength weapon and then you're gonna swing it uh the charge r2 and then while the animation's going you're gonna spam x and go into your menu click the s and for whatever reason it just thinks you're trying to use the uh boss soul so yeah the a decent way and if i ever do something like that i will just uh like show it on the camera because i mean <laughs> Why not? It's not the biggest deal. Uh, but, you know, I also, you know, I want to let you guys know what's happening in this run, but uh, also, you know, give you guys some tips just in case in, you know, your playthrough, you're like, oh, you know, I, I need some more, you know, souls, but I just don't really want to, you know, spend three hours grinding for, or grinding some ads or something. I think, uh, I mean... Like, some of the later games is a bit different because they have way better grind spots, but especially, you know, at least in Dark Souls for me, it's a bit different. Like, in Demon Souls, you know, you got that, uh, um, that Reaper spot. You can just keep farming them, which is so nice, but not too, too many in DS1. Yeah, we're gonna take down Pinwheel. He has, like, no damage reduction to this uh these arrows so i'm just able to get like nearly 200 but uh yeah this was uh definitely my biggest mistake right here and i got absolutely wombo comboed um 
pretty sure I was pressing B or maybe even spamming it. Um, but yeah, the poise lock absolutely just destroyed me. And so yeah, now we're gonna head on into Nido. And in Nido, I was a bit worried also just because uh, he has a bunch of skeletons that spawn into his fight. And they can just be so annoying just because they keep respawning. And I don't want to have to fight four enemies at once. It'd be like fighting the Capra Demon, but just never taking out the dogs. You know, it's definitely possible, but it's not the most optimal strategy. So, yeah, we're going to put on the, the big chunky boy armor and use the Divine Bow. So when we kill the, the guys, it fully kills them. And then we're going to switch out our armor for some uh, less heavy armor. We're able to get a uh, light rollback. And yeah, pretty much just a game of baiting Nido side to side. Without going too far in, just because I don't want to get those big skeletons on me. They are definitely going to be... They are way worse just because... Um, one, they deal way more damage, and they have so much more health. So it's like, <laughs> not something I want to mess around with, really. But yeah, Nito two hits away, and we're going to take him out. That is one of the great Lord Souls acquired. And so yeah, we got Nito, we got Seath, we got... Four kings and well, who else? Am I forgetting anyone? No, I think I feel like I'm forgetting someone. But anyways, we're gonna upgrade the bow. Oh yeah, my gosh, I keep I keep forgetting about the worst <laughs> the worst boss in this game, which is the Beta Chaos. Um. I guess the one good thing about using a bow is you don't have to go as far in the bed of chaos fight. You just have to get yourself to a position where you just hit the things. But yeah, I figured we'll go take down Sif. I wasn't sure when I was going to fight the four kings, but uh, you know, just give me a little bit of progress towards that. So we'll take him down. And yeah, we, it feels bad. Take down Sif so low that he's limping. Fortunately, we, we gotta take him down. I know, I know. If only you could get the Covenant of Artorias without killing him. And yeah, I get absolutely bamboozled by the Fire Sage. Not good. <laughs> And yeah, very similar to just the uh, Asylum Fire Sage, or well, the Asylum Demon uh, that's below. He just like deals so much damage, has so much health, or like if you mess up once, like you're kind of screwed. But luckily, I do have a ton of health and uh, a ton of Estus, so this really helps. Yeah, a good strategy with Benepi Demon if you're fighting a melee is just to take out his tail because it can be quite, quite annoying and a bit of a hindrance. Especially once he gets to phase two, it can just be way more annoying. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna you know slowly pelt him, take him down, and yeah, he was not that much trouble. Same as Sif. only boss so far that's really been somewhat of a trouble was Nido, because I died a few times, and of course, Beta Chaos is going to mess me up a bit. I did uh, mess up there a bit, though. I went too far to the right. I was getting stuck on that tree branch. But yeah, this is this one kind of pissed me off. It's like, come on, man, I was on the freaking log, and <laughs> it just yeeted me off. And of course, like, every time you do die, like, it's, I've definitely edited it down a ton, but every time you die, it's at least, like, a five-minute walk just back to the boss fight. 
and I could make it easier by um, using that shortcut uh, by giving the that lady a ton of humanities, but I forget, it's either like 20 or 30 humanities you have to give her, and then um, yeah, that just takes away from my Seath fight and my Four Kings fight. So yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna really worry about that. We'll just take down a bit of chaos and then head on over to Seath. And Seath has a ton of health. <laughs> um, he definitely took me a ton of time in my fist only run. Him and Ornstein Smo were pretty much like my my challenge run stoppers. They just took a ridiculous amount of time. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna keep on attacking him. I'm pretty sure I switched out my arrows, so it would be doing slightly more damage. And yeah, we take down Seath, another Lord Soul. We've taken out three of them now. We only got one left, which is the four kings. I guess you could say four left. Um, and yeah, four kings basically is a, a DPS race. It's you know, how much damage can you do in uh, the certain amount of time. So I just I wasn't sure uh, how this would be. I know that they're weak to lightning, so I was like, all right, let's get another bow, uh, upgrade it with lightning, and then, uh, like, worst case scenario is we just switch to the regular one. But uh, we're also going to put on the big chunky boy armor just because, um, I mean, I'm going to need as much damage as I can get, and uh, this allows me to keep attacking even when I'm hit. Very nice. And yeah, you can see just like how fast you really need to be for the four kings to just like spawn one by one. And yeah, unfortunately, I do get to the point where four of them do spawn. And like I do take them one uh, by one. But like usually once I kill one, then they'll all start attacking. So it's just a bit of a gank fest. But, uh, yeah, I do use all of my S's, so I have to use my humanity, which is, uh, fine. I'm at this point where, I mean, it's nice having humanity for Gwyn, but it's really not needed as much, in my opinion. And we're gonna take the four kings down, finally. This is definitely the toughest part, uh, and it took such a long time. That's with the, uh, this is, or well, actually, I get the bow fully upgraded later, but it should, it's like a plus 11 right now, so, you're, or plus 10. So not the best, but definitely not the worst. <laughs> um, and I guess, like, one reason why I did want to wait a little bit, just because I know, uh, that, like, right before Gwyn, you can get a ton of the Titanite chunks just by farming the knights in front of him. I could have probably grinded out the chunks like a different place before Four Kings and some of the other bosses, but and yeah, we got we got them. No need to really worry. And of course we're gonna do the Juggernaut build again just because we'll be taking a lot less damage. It is a lot harder with Gwyn just because whenever he does attack, he will break you out. He just has so much damage and uh <laughs> i don't know that's the thing i have the fire resistance too and i'm still getting like massively hit uh though this armor doesn't have the best uh fire resistance that uh is something but it has really good physical so yeah i'm just trying to find an opening right now uh Luckily, though, I do have a ton of humanity, so if I do get, you know, very, very low, I can just use one to get the full health. And, yeah, thankfully, he starts doing, like, his jumpy stuff. I'm able to just keep spamming him while he's jumping around. And that is Dark Souls 1, completed with only a bow. It was super fun, decently uh, challenging, but, uh... For the most part, it was 
this boss fights that took a decently long time just because of how little damage the bow actually does but yeah we're gonna head on into the ending of course we're gonna do the dark ending the best ending in this game and yeah so while this is talking uh i've got a few elden ring uh videos coming out soon i think you guys will really enjoy it i beat potentially be Elden Ring uh, with just tools only. I've got the RL 1 plus 0 coming out along with Remembrance weapons only. And yeah, I've got another Demon Souls run. Uh, this is a no healing Demon Souls, which was uh, kind of funny. It was a bit easier than <laughs> Dark Souls 1. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You'll have to wait and see for yourself if if it was easy or not. But I greatly appreciate you guys tuning into the video. And Skilled Fawn out.